Yes, our CNN counterterrorism analyst Philip Mudd, our CNN military analyst, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, and our CNN terrorism analyst Paul Cruikshank. Uh, Phil, you just heard Arwa's report, and it's pretty amazing. Uh, these ISIS guys, and you know, you got to take what they're saying with a grain of salt. They're saying these U.S. led airstrikes are really not having much of an impact because they were braced for them. They moved their equipment, they're, they hid their, their top commanders, they knew what was coming, and they went into heavily populated civilian areas. What do you make of that? Boy, this really underscores, Wolf, the importance of endurance of the U.S. mission. When you look at the degradation of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and Pakistan, for example, we're 13 years into that. We've degraded the al-Qaeda infrastructure in Pakistan a great deal, but that took years. I remember sitting in the chair four years after 9-1-1, wondering how much damage we'd done, we'd done to the al-Qaeda infrastructure. What we're seeing here is an embedded terrorist organization that's taking advantage of civilians. But if we don't stick around for months or years, they will succeed in embedding and avoiding us. What do you make of this, uh, these, uh, what these two ISIS terrorists just told Arwa, Paul? Well, Wolf, this is consistent with a whole stream of reporting coming out of Syria that ISIS uh, have embedded fighters uh, in civilian areas. And I think that's going to make them much more difficult to target than, say, al-Qaeda in the Afghanistan-Pakistan border region. Those were remote, mountainous areas. Uh, ISIS are in urban areas, a, li a little bit like Hamas in Gaza. So it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to target them. There's also concern that this group could train uh, Western operatives in apartment blocks in places like Raqqa to come back and target the West. How on earth are the United States going to target them without a lot of civilian casualties, Wolf? General Hurtling, uh, over the weekend, we saw some uh, video of protests uh, throughout Syria. These were not from anti-American elements. These are people who want to cooperate with the United States. But they were protesting the U.S.-led airstrikes, shouting death to America. It's pretty shocking when you think about it, because the U.S. was not going after Bashar al-Assad's regime. Take a look at this video. These are the people the U.S. wants to train to fight uh, Bashar al-Assad's regime and to, to fight ISIL, ISIS, ISIS, if you will. What do you make of this? No, I, I don't think all of those are people we're going to train to fight either uh, ISIS or the uh, Shad regime. Wolf. Some of those are members of the, the Nusra organization. Some are members of Khorasan, as was pointed out in a very good New York Times article today. And again, whenever you're dealing in this part of the world, you're dealing with multiple groups, all with their separate interests. And I would suggest that anybody who's shouting death to America because we haven't gone after specifically Bashar al-Assad is, is not understanding the situation that we find ourselves in with interest of the American people behind us. Uh, everything Paul and Phil have have said is exactly right and I would add to what you said as well that we've got to take a lot of the comments by people in this part of the world with a little bit of a grain of salt just the fact that these terrorists uh, the terrorist that was talking to Arwa has gone underground it doesn't want to use communication tells me that some of the airstrikes the strategic airstrikes that we've conducted in Syria have in fact been effective in terms of turning uh, ISIS uh, on their ear a little bit but here's what worries a lot of US officials Phil, and I'm anxious to get your thoughts. Uh, the fact that these free Syrian army, these pro-U.S. elements that the U.S. is about to train and fund and arm and all of that, they are now increasingly apparently aligning themselves with these al-Nusra terrorists because they have one thing in common, uh, they hate Bashar al-Assad's regime. Well, I think this is going to be a real problem for us over time, because what you're seeing, and Mark talked about this, is that we have different objectives. Let's be clear here. Our objective is not regime change. We did that without a great deal of success in some ways in Iraq. Saddam's not there, but we have chaos. We're not talking specifically about using force for regime change in Syria. We're talking about going after ISIS. That's way too subtle, I think, for the Free Syrian Army. And we're going to have to have some conversations that say, if we're training folks to go after ISIS, why aren't we training them to go after Assad? This has got to be resolved at some point. Yeah, well, right now the uh, U.S. is not training him to go after Bashar al-Assad. They're training him specifically to go after ISIS. Uh, pa uh, Paul, right. what do you think about these reports? And I don't, I haven't, we haven't confirmed them, but there are increasing indications that the al-Nusra terrorist front, and the U.S. regards al-Nusra as a terrorist organization, may be, may be aligning itself with ISIS. Well, uh, there have been some defections from uh, Jabhat al-Nusra to ISIS. Perhaps a couple of hundred people uh, have gone over. But the two leaderships are very much still uh, at war with each other. Over the last few days, uh, Jabhat al-Nusra leaders have said they're still at war 
uh, with ISIS. But I think the concern is if these airstrikes continue and they intensify, uh, you could in the future see some cooperation uh, between the two groups. Some of the hardliners uh, within Jabhat al-Nusra may be arguing uh, for that, Wolf. All right, we're going to leave it right there, but we're going to continue the uh, breaking news. Guys, thanks very much. Phil Mudd, Paul Cruikshank, Mark Kirtling, uh, appreciate it very much. Still ahead, there's shocking new information.